Hey, Bunny. Hey. Guess what? What? No, you have to guess. You have to actually uh, guess. Uh, 42. You're not funny. The Constellation Orion. Wow, you are close, Bunny. You're like really, really close. Like that's impressive. Like, like kudos to you. Hats off to you. Golf clap. <laughs> you're like super close to what I was about to say. Okay, well, you're not that close. You're you're like a bit close, maybe. Yeah. Or or like a smidgen close. You're a smidgen close. <laughs> well, no, no. Now that I'm looking, no, actually, you're a bit far. Yeah. You're a bit you're 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 a little bit far from what I was gonna say. You're quite far, actually. Now that I'm sort of stepping back from your answer and like looking at the big picture. Oh my god, Bunny, you are so off. <laughs> you were like ridiculously off. You were amazingly off. Like, how even did you do that? How were <laughs> you so far off the mark, Bunny? You were like so gone. You are so out there. Like, are you <laughs> like are you like are you all right, buddy? Like, is there something wrong that no. you're not telling me? Or like, oh no, oh no, oh bunny. I I know I okay, I get it, bunny. I can read between the lines here. You're dying, aren't you, bunny? Um aren't you? Well, in a in a Sylvia Plath kind of way, aren't we all? What what have you been hiding from me, bunny? What is it? Is it cancer of the cervix of the avian flu of the AIDS? <laughs> is that what you have? You have plague of the AIDS of the cancer of the cervix? Is uh, is that it, Bunny? When were you going to tell me, Bunny? I deserve to know the truth! Well, I was waiting for your birthday, you know. You know what? I'm sorry, Bunny. I'm sorry to have lashed out at you like that. I didn't mean to lash out. Look, Bunny, you and me, you and me, Bunny, we, we <laughs> will get through this together okay yeah because i am here for you and we are going to fight this and you are going to beat this you are going to beat this to you and i we're going to get through this together <laughs> don't you die on me soldier <laughs> don't you die on me <laughs> don't you die on me <laughs> anyway it's homework time once again yes on old pop on film podcast <clears throat> People of the internet, your attention, please. Cease your food Instagramming and kindly pay attention! Each week, the dreaded Council of Maxwells descends from their silvery floating citadel in the sky and picks out a homework assignment via the fiery ritual of carousel. <laughs> a homework assignment that is picked with the express purpose of bettering our listeners. Nay, all secret lizard people everywhere. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, but not you, Hillary Clinton. Yeah. Shame on you. What's the point of being a secret Illuminati lizard person if you're going to lose the election? <laughs> That's it the whole is, point. It's a damn good point. Like, if she's... A secret Illuminati Freemason lizard person, child molesting pedophile billionaire Satanist, then how did she lose? <laughs> like she was everything. I believe she was a member of Cobra. <laughs> I she think so. She, she wasn't just a member of Cobra, she was also a member of uh Jobra. Jobra. Which was which was the community the G.I. Joe Cobra hybrid. <laughs> a preview just dropped today, Bunny, for uh, the Netflix movie, uh, uh, a, a, a stupid and uh, a pointless and futile gesture, I believe is what it's called. Okay. It's uh, David Wayne's new film. He did Wet Hot American Summer. And it's a biopic about the the his the making of and the history of National Lampoon. Okay. As a, as a magazine just created by two guys that wasn't selling really well. And then it became popular and it became a cold hit. And then suddenly 
they're working on making a movie and they're doing cocaine and the Saturday Night Live people are there. And and so like it's a movie of the history of the National Lampoon and also a history of Saturday Night Live and a history of the making of uh, uh, Animal Animal House and yeah. Caddy. Jack. And so all of these famous people are in it. And so you see um, what's the name? John Belushi and Bill Murray. And the, the main reason why I'm excited about this is that Chevy Chase yeah. is paid by Joel McHale. I, I don't know Joel McHale. He played um, uh, Jeff Winger, the star of Community. Okay. Okay. And he was in community for like five or six seasons with Chevy Chase. Yes. That's why I'm excited about this. That, that, yeah, that could be interesting. They've picked like the perfect person to play Chevy Chase. And also you got to realize that this is like 1977, 78, 79, 80, 81. So we're talking famous, sexy Chevy Chase back when he <laughs> realized, like, holy shit, I'm famous and people think I'm attractive. Well, all right, then. I'm going to be a dick for the rest of my life. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, Joel McHale is perfect for young, sexy Chevy Chase. Back when he <laughs> still thought, like, oh, I'm, I'm going to be huge. I'm going to be a leading man. My star will never fade. Yeah. I'm really excited. The preview just came out, like, a few hours ago. It's a Netflix movie. And uh, a bunch of really famous people are in it, and uh, I'm really excited. You should see that preview. It's really good. I, I've seen it like three times already today. It's really, really good. Yeah. So uh, where was I? Oh, yes. This week we are talking. Um, we are talking about. Oh, uh, uh, about some of my favorite topics. Pizza, the 1980s, Atari games, CeeLo Green and creepy ass animatronics. Yes. Yay! So this week, our homework assignment is a lengthy, detailed article. Possibly too lengthy and detailed. Yes. From Vice entitled A History of Chuck E. Cheese's Animatronic Band. <laughs> mm. Mm-hmm. I'm taking a big swing of, swig of my drink for this. Um Maxwell, my son, loves Chuck E. Cheese to yeah. death. We do not go a lot. The last time I went was for my uh, nephew Jaden's birthday. And it's funny because it was like two years ago, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, I was there and Maxwell was all excited and Jaden was all excited. But then you look around and there's Bella and there's Emerald and there, there's Amber. And they're all looking really nervous. And I'm like, why are you looking nervous? And And it's because... It's it, they're just staring at this robot animatronic band going. Oh, my God. Five Nights at Freddy's has ruined me. <laughs> and I'm, oh, so you're picturing these robots coming to life and strangling you and, and uh, shoving your dead corpse into a suit. And then the suit comes to life every night and plays. So you're imagining that these audio animatronic robots are actually filled inside with the bodies of dead children. Yeah. Stay. Dad, you're not fucking helping. <laughs> but Maxwell loves Chuggy e. Cheese, and um, uh, they're getting rid of the robot bands at all yeah. of the Chuggy e. Cheeses. And so I, I, and this article is just remarkably long, like way too long. We're talking about the history of the Chuggy e. Cheese robot band. This article does not have to be that long. No. Have you ever but, been to but, a? But we but we learned a lot. I think. Mm-hmm. No, I have never been to a Chuck E. Cheese. What? I have. I have never. I. I don't have children. It's never come up. <laughs> if you go well, to have... if you go to Chuck E. Cheese alone, people are going to want to talk to you. They do have alcohol, though. Do they? Yes, they do. <laughs> You know, just one day, just you and me, let's just go to Chuck E. Cheese and get fucking wasted <laughs> off our ass. <laughs> that I would be down for. And they're like, 
Oh, we're banned from Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> hey, hey, Bunny, you want to go drink? Yeah, but not Chuck E. Cheese. They've got my picture up. <laughs> can't go, can't go into the Chuck E. Cheese anymore. <laughs> this article helped me answer a few questions that I had growing up. Yeah, such as, um. By my school, the Catholic school that I went from first to eighth grade at, right near there, there was a showbiz pizza. Yes. And Which I, I did go- not know existed until this article. Oh, I, I loved showbiz pizza because showbiz pizza had the rock a fire explosion show. And, and that was the gorilla and uh, the the drummer who was a surfer and there was a cheerleader who had pom poms and there was a, a redneck guy in the side. And there was a, a dog that had a Mary that had like a hand puppet. And, and it, it was really weird. But the thing that I loved about showbiz pizza is that you would go to showbiz pizza and they'd have a routine and they'd be singing songs. And most of them were popular songs and they'd be doing like covers of them. And yeah. then in between that, They'd be saying jokes and stuff, and it was was, some of the jokes were kind of funny. And then, like, you'd leave and you'd come back like three weeks later um, or a month later, and the band would be doing something totally different. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, wow, I I was just here three and a half weeks ago, and it's a totally new routine. You're not just seeing the same thing over and over again. I specifically remember one joke that the Rock of Fire Explosion show did. Yes. And it was, um, they, they were talking in between uh, songs, and Fat said, Hey guys, you guys should uh, check out my latest business venture. Oh, what's your business venture? Well, I started a 1 800 number where people <laughs> can call me Fats personally. You can talk to me and I can tell you jokes and we can have just a fun time. Oh, really? What's the number? Oh, well, the number is 1-800-CALL-FATS. That's 1-800-C-A-L-L-F-A-T-Z. <laughs> and, then, and then the other band members are going, aren't you? Wait a second. Sh- shouldn't it be F-A-T-S? Oh, you don't want to call F-A-T-S. That's not my number. You call F-A-T-S. You get some crazy person in the Philippines somewhere. No, it's F-A-T-Z. And I remember sitting there eating pizza and watching this and seeing three boys stand up and say, I'm going to run to the the telephone outside and call Fats right now and running to the telephone. And then like two <laughs> three kids following that kid and they're all running outside of the showbiz pizza to be the first to get to the payphone. But back in the day, payphones never had a Z. Is that right? That yeah. might be right. Yeah. And that was the joke because the kids all come walking back like two minutes later going, there is no Z on the phone. <laughs> Like, yeah, that was the joke. Like, it, like me always being the, like, level-headed, rational kid. Like, all the kids are like, I'm going to run to the phone and call right now. And they're all running. And then my mom's like, Stevie, do you want to go with them? No, there's no Z on the phone. <laughs> so uh, I believe that was the joke. That's why the surfer one was saying, isn't it F-A-T-S? Yeah, so, yeah, this is all a joke. It's very funny. <laughs> but i loved showbiz so pizza. so you actually went to a chuck e cheese at no, a chuck e so cheese uh, well showbiz same fucking place and the article proves it i think uh at an age appropriate stage in your life yeah yeah oh my parents like they'd take, they'd say, "Oh, we're gonna go to the doctor. We're gonna just give you a little checkup, just a tiny little checkup. Everything will be fine." I go to the doctor, and they're like, "Oh, uh, little Stevie here hasn't been to the doctor in quite some time. We need to give him five shots." <laughs> yeah. 
and they just shoot my arm up and I'm there crying. And my parents, my, when I say parents, I just mean mom. My dad never did anything. Yeah. So my mom would be like, oh, Stevie, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't know they would do that. Here, let me make it up to you. And we're at Showbiz Pizza. <laughs> and the okay, pizza. Cool. Good deal. The way that I remember the pizza is, um, I don't because the pizza didn't matter because there were giant robots singing Beatles songs to me. Yeah. And then in between their songs, there were arcade games. <laughs> so, like, I don't remember the pizza. It could have been made out of cardboard. It could have been made out of shit for all I care. But the important thing is the pizza didn't matter. But then I got invited to a birthday party and it was at a Chuck E. Cheese in Scotts in Mesa, Arizona. And that was like 40 minutes away, 45 minutes away and like super far. And and I, and I'm like, Chuck E. Cheese, what's that? And and uh, the kids are like, oh, it's like showbiz pizza, but it's so much better. And I'm like, OK, I don't I don't. But I don't. OK, let me see if my parents and I begged my parents to l let me go. And we did. And we went to Chuck E. Cheese and it was a completely different place because there were these there were these picture frames on the wall and there would be creatures that were talking to you and telling jokes. Yeah. But then that was just one room. Then you would go to a different room. And there was one room that had all of these dogs that were dressed like the Beatles <laughs> and they were singing show tunes and then you went to these different uh, rooms that had different arcade games and they, it was so weird and bizarre it was a completely different thing and i'm like oh wow uh okay i thought she, she showbiz and, and and chuck e cheese were were the same but they were just completely different and so bizarre and weird and and i never went back to that chuck e cheese and so I, but I would go to the showbiz pizza all the time in the rock fire explosion show. And I love the rock fire explosion show. And, and so when I got older, yeah. like in like my, my preteens, all of the Chuck E. Cheese's closed down and all of the showbiz pizzas closed down. And eventually they were all replaced with Chuck E. Cheese. So I always heard that these two companies were like fighting with each other. So I assumed that Chuck E. Cheese won in the lawsuit and took over. But no, apparently it was the other way around. Showbiz yeah. Pizza beat Chuck E. Cheese and then called all of them Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> Look, I never thought that I would say this, but I had a bit of a hard time following the complicated political machinations <laughs> of history of Chuck E. Cheese. Yes. And 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 I feel you're completely justified. Yeah. Now I did see the documentary on the Rock of Fire Explosion show. I think it was on YouTube or maybe Netflix. It was on Netflix. Yeah. It'd still be on Netflix. But I watched it, and I watched it because I loved them growing up. They were actually fully realized characters, and they would sing popular songs. And 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 uh, I would watch them growing up, and I loved them. But then, like, after they would do like maybe like a ten minute set, and then they would shut down for like fifteen minutes, and then they would come back on again after fifty minutes and do like a different set. And always between the sets, uh -huh. like the like the uh, the the robots would turn off, the lights would come off, and curtains would come around the characters. And there were always those kids who were, who there was always that one boy who was brave enough to walk over there and peek under the curtain. Oh! And let me tell you, a, a few times I was that brave, and it was the creepiest thing in the world. I think that's why, um. I did not play Five Nights at Freddy's for a really long time. Bella was playing it, and Emerald was playing it, and Amber was playing it when it first came out, and it's like this super popular game, and I'm like, you know what? I'm not sure why, but um, this scares the shit out of me, and I'm not going to play it. <laughs> Don't ask me why. I'm not 100% certain why myself. All I know is that I'm not playing Five Nights at Freddy's. Time to shine! Oh my God! But Bella's coming out here. I told her I'd be calling on her. 
for this because she is a Five Nights at Freddy's master, but I'm not at I'm, Five Nights at Freddy's yet. I keep mentioning Five Nights at Freddy's, but I'm not there yet. I'm just going to say, I was on the floor laying down. <laughs> yeah. I'm cold. Okay. <laughs> So there were two bands. There was the Rock of Fire Explosion show, and that was at Showbiz Pizza. And then there was Munch's Make Believe Band, and yes. they were Chuck E. Cheese version. And then this one guy who had this uh, uh, animatronics company, he created Munch's Make Believe Band for Chuck E. Cheese. And then and as far as I can tell from the story, it's a bit complicated, but then this guy was like, okay, I'm going to buy Chuck E. Cheese. And then he's going to buy Chuck E. Cheese, but before he buys Chuck E. Cheese, he meets the guy who created Munch's Make Believe Band. And then next thing you know, instead of buying Chuck E. Cheese, he just says, screw you guys. I'm going to go with your audio animatronics guy, and we're going to make our own restaurant. It's going to be Showbiz Pizza, and I'm going to make sure, since I have the guy who made Chuck E. Cheese for you, I'm going to make sure it's better. So, <laughs> hey, guy who created Chuck E. Cheese for the Chuck E. Cheese people. Um, do the same thing, but better. So yes. the Rock of Fire Explosion show was basically what he wanted to do with Munch's Make Believe Band, but better. And it was just this, it was a bigger, better thing. Yeah. And it's an interesting article, surprisingly fraught with conflict. Yes. Yes, very much so. And it would make a pretty good movie. And I loved the Rock of Fire Explosion show. And then uh, a Showbiz Pizza left. And so when Chuck E. Cheese took over, I'm like, I'm never going back on a Chuck E. Cheese. I'm so pissed at this. I hate Chuck E. Cheese. But then I got older <laughs> and like I'm like in my I'm like 19 years old, 20 years old, and I'm dating uh, Sarah Snow. And it, it's her birthday, and I want to do something special, something she wouldn't expect. And so I blindfold her, and I drive her around for a while just to pretend like I'm going someplace really far. But instead, mm -hmm. I gave her a birthday at Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> okay. She's like a teenager, and there's no reason for her to be there. So I just thought it was a bit ridiculous that there's all these tiny little kids, and then suddenly us. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And so we're there at Chuck E. Cheese, and I'm like, uh, she's like, oh, my God, there's a band. Yeah, it's Munch's Make Believe Band. They're crap. Let me tell you what was wonderful. <laughs> the Rock the Fire Explosion show. Wait a second. What the hell's happening? And so uh, when, I, when I finally went to Chuck E. Cheese at the literal location where the Rock of Fire Explosion show was, mm -hmm. um, in between Munch's Make Believe Band playing, TVs would appear, and you know what they would play in between the sets of uh, the Chuck E. Cheese band? What? No. Veggie Tales! No! Veggie Tales. Yeah, the Christian talking, singing vegetable that cartoon. Was Christian? Yeah, it was Christian. <laughs> childhood was secretly Christian. You didn't know Veggie Tales was Christian? Oh, no! hell yeah. They would do Bible stories. There oh was like Noah, God. like the story of Noah and stuff. You didn't know that? No! They would end every video with like, uh, uh, smile and remember, Jesus loves you. Yeah. <laughs> Can't believe you didn't know that was Christian. Holy <laughs> shit. Emerald had the same reaction when we told her, when we told her recently, like, oh, wait a second. You didn't know that the private school you went to was Christian? And she's like, what? It was Christian? And I'm like, yeah, didn't you wonder why you went to freaking church at school? I mean, half of this might be our fault, that but the other half is also your fault. <laughs> but yeah, they would play like Christian cartoons in between. So then when I got older... And now I have my own kids, and they want to go to Chuck E. Cheese. I'm like, I don't know if we should go to Chuck E. Cheese. I mean, I know they want to go, but, like, last time I went there, they're playing, like, Veggie Tales and, like, Christian propaganda. I don't know what the hell's going on with Chuck E. Cheese anymore. I still miss the Rock of Fire Explosion show, and I'm a bit bitter about this. So we went to Chuck E. Cheese, and it, in between... Uh, sets of Munch's Make Believe Band, they're playing like music videos and like cartoons and stuff. And one of the music videos shocked me because um, I'm like, it, 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 it was a really good song and it was really catchy. And we heard the song maybe like four or five times while we were there at the Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah. And it's a really good song called I'm, uh, uh, I am thinking about something. I am thinking about something other than you. 
and it's a really good song. And then and then a uh, Weird Al Yankovic's in the video, and it's basically uh, a band doing like one of the first musical numbers from uh, the Blues Brothers. What's the name of the blind guy? Um, Ray Charles. Ray Charles. Ray Charles is number from the Blues Brothers, except it's in this music video. And then it took me a long time to real. And, and Weird Al Yankovic's in the video. And I'm like, oh, he must have directed the video. And then finally, after like the third or fourth time, I'm like, holy shit. Hey, honey, you see this video here they keep playing? That's fucking Hanson. <laughs> she looked at the video and she's like, that can't be Hanson. When they did M. Bop. They were like t- 10 years old and I'm like, yeah, and that was like 15 years ago. That was like 15, 20 years ago. Now they're older and apparently talented. So, uh, <laughs> I'm not proud of the fact that I have a Hanson song on my phone, but look, Weird Al Yankovic recorded the music video and it's a damn good song. Yes. In fact, a radio station in uh, LA would play the song all the time on the radio station, but what they their gimmick was, we're going to play this song, we love this song, it's a really good song, it just came out, it's catchy, we're going to be playing it for a week until we tell you who it is. Okay. And good, they played good it plan, I think. Yeah, they played it for a week until they finally said, okay, now this is Hanson. And finally people are like, oh, okay, no, this is pretty good. So, um, I, I, I ended up, after reading this article, I ended up spending way too much time than I would like to admit looking for footage of CeeLo Green performing with the Rock of Fire Explosion show. Because <laughs> it says that in the article. Because a, a couple of years ago, the Rock of Fire Explosion show, which all but disappeared, became popular again. Because yeah. this guy who created the Rock of Fire Explosion show, he still had a big giant working rock of fire explosion show band in his, in like his shed in the backyard. And so he started programming it to sing popular hits and he re- recorded one and put it on YouTube. And suddenly everyone cares about the rock of fire explosion show again. Yeah. And so uh, suddenly like the rock of fire explosion show is cool. And so CeeLo green, the guy who sang crazy, do I? Do you think I'm crazy? Oh my god! Does that make me crazy? <laughs> and then he had a surprising hit with the song "Fuck You." Yeah. You don't remember that, Bella? No. I see you driving around town with a girl I know, and I'm like, "Fuck you!" <laughs> <laughs> and the song became so popular that he recorded a clean version called "Forget You." Yeah. And so it, it, CeeLo Green had like a extended run at a big hotel in on the Vegas Strip. And it was a mixture of live songs and recorded songs and, and a big spectacle. And when he sang Fuck You, the Rock of Fire Explosion show came out and did, was his backup band. And he sang over them. Yeah. So all I could, yeah. So all I could find on YouTube was a recording of the Rock of Fire Explosion show doing the backup. I couldn't find the actual performance. And apparently the reason why is because his show in Vegas was so huge that he turned it into a uh, um, a live concert movie. And oh. so, like, I love the Rock of Fire Explosion show, but I'm not paying $14.99 yeah. to see this concert show. Anyway, I just love the fact that a very small part of my childhood has a cult following now. <laughs> Now Chuck E. Cheese is working on removing all of the animatronic bands from all of their Chuck E. Cheese locations. There's going to be no more robots singing. And there's some shit in the article about how uh, Chuck E. Cheese wants to be, I don't know, like fucking Starbucks or Panera Bread or some shit. Yeah. In fact, and like, oh, we're going to replace the animatronic band and replace, uh, replace that with muted soft colors and wood paneling. And it's like, oh, you're, 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 you're not a fucking... You're not a TGI Fridays. Yeah. Okay. Not at you're all. A, you're, you're, a, you're an ADHD kid uh, opium house. Opium yes. den. No? 
Now, the article only lightly touches upon Five Nights at Freddy's. But the real reason why Chuck E. Cheese is getting rid of its robots mm-hmm. has to be fucking Five Nights at Freddy's. There's no other reason why suddenly now Chuck E. Cheese is um, getting rid of all of its robots. It has to be because of Five Nights at Freddy's. So you think this- you think the animatronics in Five Nights at Freddy's have have spoiled animatronics? Uh, I'm gonna let Bella. What? Bella, what? the last time we went to Chuck E. Cheese, <laughs> did you see the audio animatronics and said, "Oh my God, this is fun! I'm really excited to see these audio animatronics," or were you like, "Oh my God, they're going to come kill me"? <laughs> um. Remember Jaden's birthday party? Yes! You and Amber and Emerald were just freaked the fuck out. Was, was Deanna there? I yeah, feel yeah, like... Deanna was there too. Yeah. Deanna was the one who was, like, you guys were being quiet about it. Deanna was the one who was being vocal and Deanna about she it. Deanna was, was like, the one that was like, heck? oh my God, what the me. hell? I didn't know they were here. Is that what this, is that what Freddy's is based on? Oh my God, they're going to kill me. <laughs> Deanna, just can you? It's Jaden's birthday. Can you calm down? Well, I'm sorry. I'm not the one who wanted my birthday at a place where robots are going to come kill us. I hated that so much. They were so creepy. Bella, how many? This is going to be a painful question, but um, how many Five Nights at Freddy's games are there right now? Five, not six. Okay, that was a surprisingly uh, uh, passionate question so uh follow up what the hell are you talking about are you talking about the new game that just came yes! out which is a like a like a a For, pizza uh, store simulator where you can kind of baby fazbear's pizzeria simulator okay. it's a, it's not the sixth game it Literally, the rest of the games is just Five Nights at Freddy's, Five Nights at Freddy's 2, Five Nights at Freddy's 3. And this one's not, it's not Five Nights at Freddy's 6. Okay, now for the uninitiated, Bella, and real quick, try and explain it the, the plot of the first <laughs> Five Nights at Freddy's game. Okay, I'm just Quickly. talking about the first one. I'm just talking about the first one, because I know that there's like a ridiculous freaking mythology in this stupid thing. <laughs> Quickly. Yeah, just just explain the first game. Just explain the first game while I lower the YouTube video. Um, well, there's a guy that works at the the uh, pizzeria called Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. Yeah, and he like works there with his. He works there and he takes his daughter there or something. I don't know. The whole something. game is in first person. You're this guy yeah. and you're a night watchman. Well, not not necessarily, but wh- whatever. Um, you. Uh, so this guy who works there, like, it never explains anything that happens to him, but something happens, and he basically goes insane and kills five children. All oh, right. So you're talking- okay, so you're talking about the the background of the story. I was talking about the actual mm-hmm. game, but no, go ahead. So some guy who works at Freddy Fazbear's goes nuts and kills children. Yes. Okay. Um, he kills the children, and then he's like, oh, crap, I actually killed them. They're, like, dead. They're actually dead. Well, I don't know what to do with them. I guess I'll just shove them in these animatronic suits. And then he does <laughs> that. And, like, I don't know. They... Come they, to life. They're, yeah, they're they filled with the spirits life, of the kids or something. And that's where the first game is. Like they come to life and then the you work at the pizzeria and they they they're alive and they come and try to kill you because you're dressed like you're dressed as a security guard. And that's exactly what the the, the guy, guy was. Yeah, that's exactly what the guy was. Yeah. And then eventually one thing leads to another and then the spirits come back and haunt the guy who killed them and then he ends up hiding from them in another animatronic suit it's like a spring lock suit and there's water dripping from the ceiling because the freaking the pizzeria sucks and so (laughs) it triggers the box and it like basically all the metallic parts clamps shut and he dies 
and other things that I don't want to go into because so much. <laughs> yeah, there, there's it, basically you have to survive five nights as the night watchman security guard guy at this area really where the audio animatronics are coming to life and trying to kill you. It it and is interesting that it just happens to be a pizza place. <laughs> Let me tell you something, buddy. Let me tell you something about this girl next to me, uh, uh, Isabella. Yeah. Um, I have seen her watch YouTube videos. You remember how people used to talk about Lost? Yeah. You remember how people used to talk about that? Okay, now, you remember season three, episode eight, where you saw the guy and he had the blue ring? Okay, now remember that. Now let's jump to season five. Okay, now in season five, you saw a guy and he was wearing a blue suit. Now, that guy, his name was Frank. Now, if you put Frank backwards, that's what you see on the ship in season two. Okay, so, now, what <laughs> if happened in reverse, basically? There are hour-long videos like that on YouTube for this fucking video game series. For Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> yeah, for Five Nights at Freddy's. There is a mythology so uh, deep and so rich. And here's the important part. So vague. So vague. <laughs> I'm so vague. Even. There are like there are like you, like the first game is really straightforward, but then they then like after season after the second game and after the third game they they started adding these little bits and pieces and oh wait maybe this game actually happened time wise before this game and then there's this <laughs> game and then there's this game and this game is like uh oh. Uh, if you play this in a specific way, you get these mini games and these mini games are like eight bit video games and you don't realize it at all what you're supposed to do because they don't tell you. But this is secretly the background of this character. And oh. it's, it's it's freaking insane. It is freaking insane. <laughs> This thing is so popular now, too. We just started getting a, a really lengthy novelizations. The, 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 um, the book, yeah, the those book two books one. that I got you. Twisted, the twisted ones. That's that's the second yeah. book, I think. And the other one. I yeah, know and there's know. a third one, but it's not coming out until next year. Ah, I made it. You're going to get that for me. The interesting thing is that the Five Nights at Freddy's game series was originally created by, like, these Christian guys. Yeah. And what they originally wanted was, can we make, like, a scary video game that doesn't involve a bunch of gore and profanity oh excuse me like yeah. a clean sort of no. game and so that's why you know so many of these five nights at freddy's games are really just five nights of jump scares yeah because yeah. they don't know what the, what else to do yeah <laughs> these <laughs> games have become super popular and insane and we've got books and we've got guidebooks and we've got toys we've got um funko pops because everything in the world will have a funko pop i'm pretty sure they're already working on the pope on film funko pops uh they fucking better be that's all i gotta say yeah and um then next door at toys r us there's a whole aisle of five nights at freddy's stuff there's a whole aisle of Five Nights at Freddy stuff. One of the kids at uh, Maxwell's bus stop wears this uh, Freddy Fazbear's hoodie sometimes. Yeah. And, and we'll be in the van because I don't want Maxwell to freeze. And we're just waiting there and he'll sneak up to the window in the Freddy Fazbear's outfit and Maxwell starts screaming. <laughs> so that's, that's fun for us. Yay! Yeah. But... Yes, yeah, so suddenly Chuck E. Cheese is all, hey, we're going to be getting rid of our robots to save money and not oh, at no. all because audio animatronic pizza bands have been ruined for life. Yeah. Yeah. So there's five and a half video games right now. They're working on a movie. They're working on their third book, and all the books are super popular and sell a bunch. Uh, I, 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 I still see a bunch of kids with uh, shirts and stuff. 
and uh, uh, a certain someone might be getting a Five Nights at Freddy's thing or two this Christmas. Yeah. Uh, oh, I wonder who that is. Talking about? Talking about mom. I was going to say sketchy. Sketchy? The dog? That's good. But yeah, the reason why they're getting rid of freaking uh, the audio animatronic bands has nothing whatsoever to do with saving money or this and that, yada, yada. It has to do with Five Nights at Freddy's. Five Nights at Freddy's has ruined Chuck E. Cheese, and now they're trying to reinvent themselves. Side note, one of the last times that we went to the California State Fair. Yeah. Every time we went to the fair, we spent a ridiculous amount of time checking out the county Their booths. Yeah. Because my dad would always take me to the Arizona State Fair, and I'm like, let's go to this ride. Let's go to this ride. Or let's see this. Hey. There's going to be a free monster truck show, or maybe we can go to this concert, or maybe we can go to this. No, we're going to go to every educational booth at this fair. Oh. No, but I want to go on this ride. No, Stevie, let's go look at every county exhibit. After that, we'll go look and see at every <laughs> science exhibit and which ones won first place. <laughs> After that, we will go and see every animal at the livestock exhibit. And I'm like, oh, God damn it. This is so boring. But <laughs> so, so now I'm older and my parents are gone and I have kids. And I'm like, we're going to go to the fair. Isn't this going to be fun? And they're like, oh, yeah, I want to go on these rides. No. Nope. Instead, let's go walk over to this county exhibit. I never found the ride. <laughs> Anyway. Yeah, the rides are just variations of getting spun. Yeah. Here, we're going to spin you this way. I'm going to spin you this way. No, I'm going to spin you that way. That's every ride of the fair. <laughs> so, so I would we, we would spend like like an hour or two at the county exhibit, and I'd be just be telling the kids, "Hey, kid, aren't you excited? It's Mendocino County." <laughs> and like I'd be like hyping it up like ridiculously. Like, kids, do you have county fever? County fever. But but there's there I freaked out the last time we went to the California State Fair because one of the county booths was apparently someone in the county board of supervisors okay. knew someone who who had a rock of fire explosion show robot really because the surfer. Yeah, because the surfer drummer dog from the Rock of Fire Explosion show was repurposed as being a guy fishing at, at their booth talking about all the wonders of Monterey County. Why, hey there. Welcome to Mon Monterey County. We are the sixth largest county in California. Come Monterey Bay. Hey, home of the uh, Monterey Bay Aquarium. And it's like walking through all the exhibits going, oh, hey, this is a cool county. Oh, hey, I think they have uh, free uh, lollipops. We should go. <gasps> oh, my God. You're from the Rock of Fire Explosion show. No one has any idea why I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, like no one has it. Like I'm freaking out and like no one has any idea. Like, why is that Mexican throwing a scene? And I'm like, you have no idea. He's from the Rock of Fire Explosion show. They were huge. At one pizza place in, in, in Glendale, Arizona. <laughs> yeah. So, so when and that you, is it when for homework you, this week. Well, when did you go from there to Peter Piper's Pizza? Oh, I always went to Peter Piper Pizza. Oh, even, even in uh, the Peter show? Piper even in the showbiz pizza days? Showbiz pizza, they had like two or three restaurants in Phoenix. And it just so happened that one of them was near my school. Yeah. Peter Piper Pizza got its start in Phoenix, and now it's freaking everywhere. In fact, there is one about 15 minutes away from my work. Really? In Moore. Oklahoma. They opened a Peter Piper Pizza in Moore, Oklahoma. They opened one in Oklahoma City, and they opened one in Midwest City. And 
it, 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 the Peter Piper pizza that I went to, like Natasha and I have been to Peter Piper pizza twice, uh, here in Oklahoma. And it's, it, it's not the same yeah. because the pizza, the Peter Piper pizza that we eat here in Oklahoma is actually, um, good. <laughs> So it's like, oh, wait, this pizza is wonderful. This can't be Peter Piper pizza. It tasted a lot more like cardboard, but uh, <laughs> you know what? They got everything else down. Yeah. But but Peter Piper pizza, Peter Piper pizza in Phoenix is like McDonald's. There's just one everywhere. Uh-huh. Like, like there were about four Peter Piper pizzas around my house. They haven't gotten here yet. But they slowly but surely are. In fact, uh, what I read was that Peter Piper Pizza was so big in Arizona that it was purchased about five years ago. Pause for dramatic effect. By Chuck E. Cheese. What? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So now Chuck E. Cheese is trying to uh, slowly but surely, like, uh, what's the word? Colonize Peter Piper Pizza all over America, which is why now we're here in Oklahoma and there's just, like, Three Chucky, three Peter Piper pizzas. It's weird. <laughs> yeah, and right by the bathrooms at the Peter Piper Pizza, they have a bit of the history of Peter Piper Pizza. Peter yeah. Piper Pizza got its start as a small restaurant on uh, uh, in Thirty uh, First Avenue and Glendale in Glendale, Arizona, and I'm like, oh shit, that's like three oh my blocks. God, I just remembered that's like three story. streets away from my house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the place that all the cool kids would go after like the football games in high school. They would go over there and and uh, party after every like sporting event. They would go to that Peter Piper pizza, and I didn't realize it at the time, but that was the first ever Peter Piper pizza. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it hasn't gotten to Colorado yet, but it's on its way. It is on its <laughs> way, but surely getting everywhere. The pizza is a lot better, so it it, it it's it's not the same. But um, <laughs> while I was telling this story, uh, Bella. Um, suddenly uh, st- straightened her posture and uh, seems really excited. She's chopping at the bit for something. What are you saying? What were you going to say, Bella? The actual origins of Five Nights at Freddy's, like where they got the idea to make it. Um, They went to a Chuck E. Cheese and got drunk? <laughs> no. Okay. Um, well, tell the story. Actually, I'm going to get another beer. Uh, it was something like, it was a story back in like the 1900s, something, something between the 1900s and the 2000s. I don't know. Some like a lot of people died. Like four, like five, four. They were actually five people involved, but only four of the people died. Yeah. Well, no, there were six people involved: the murder and then the five victims. Only four of them died, and then one of them survived. They were murdered in a pizza place, and like the positions that the characters. Like in Five Nights, that the characters that are in Five Nights at Freddy's, where they usually are, are where those people were killed. Really? Okay. Yes. I have no idea anything else, but it was a murder and it was amazing. <laughs> it was amazing. I'm sorry. It was amazing to hear about it. But human murder can be kind of amazing too. So. <laughs> yes, it, yes, it can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Well, I love you, Bella. I love you too. And that is it for homework this week. And we genuinely and honestly, so Jen on you in Estlily. <laughs> we really do hope that your hearts, minds, and chest cavities have all been suitably open. Ah, uh, but don't think don't think you're getting out of here that easily, amigo. Don't forget. Next week's homework assignment, and for next week, for our next episode, yes. I should say, we are going back to a theme that is one of our personal favorites here on the Popon Film. I am talking, of course, about Christian propaganda. Oh, what's the last Christian propaganda we've done? No freaking clue. No freaking clue. That's why we need a historian. Yeah, it was really upset. 
with us in our show. <laughs> Next week, we will be watching a uh, direct-to-video special that might be from the 80s or maybe the 90s. There's actually very little info about this video out there on the internet, which is surprising. It's called Idol Busters. Okay. Idol Busters? I there's like Ghostbusters, except they're busting false idols. It's idol busters. And it features a special appearance by 80s Christian mainstay, Carmen. Carmen. Calm down, buddy. Carmen. You remember Carmen? No. But if you saw a picture of him and his curly ass hair. Uh, in his like beautiful looks, you might remember Carmen. I remember Carmen. I, I, I he was a big might. deal in like like in the eighties. It's like the old name of of any anyone that anyone remembers from like Christian music in the eighties. But Carmen, <laughs> I don't know about you, but Carmen made my no no tingly growing up. A lot of mixed feelings there. <laughs> anyway, it's basically like a Christian SNL. It's Christian SNL for young people. It's on YouTube, and we're going to rip it a new one. All right. Should be fun. Idol That is Busters. next week, so join us next time. Idol Busters. <laughs> so join us next week for more homework with the Pope on Film Podcast. Yes. And cut! <laughs> <laughs>